What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Three Man Broadcaster. I'm your host, Paintball Fark, and bringing you guys my review on the latest movie, The Maze Runner. Now, going into this movie, I had no idea what to expect. My friend had told me about there being a book about it, and um, I was just hoping that this movie would actually be more uh, entertaining than the rest of the movies I've seen uh, in the past few months, because the past few months, these movies have not been so great. Um, Ninja Turtles and Transformers being one of them. They, they were not the best they could have been much better um but this back to this movie it was a lot more interesting than i thought it was gonna be and from what i've been told this movie was very spot on with the book everything came straight out of the book for the most part and um it was pretty enjoyable it was to me it was pretty much a dark movie but um i'll get into that later but first i want to talk to you guys about how it started so basically there was this kid named Thomas who was put into this cage, and he, um, they sent him into this little this place called the Glade, and that's basically the safe zone for all these people who have uh, been sent here for whatever reason. I think some kind of research project, and um, they get sent into this place called the Maze. Now that what's in the Maze are called Grievers. The Grievers are basically these creatures that are out to kill anything they see so really it's kind of hard and they're, they're pretty big they're kind of like spiders almost and they're like some giant ass spiders and it, it was just really cool how they designed these things it looked like something from hell I mean it was crazy and I mean none, none of these guys had any clue of how to fight them or combat them and they were just like we're, if, we, if we see them we're just high we're not gonna deal with these things there's no point to but once Thomas got up to the glade and met all these people uh, the first person that met uh, Thomas was Galley. Galley was the other uh, main keeper of the Glade, basically, and he was the um, main character. And he was pretty crazy, I'll admit. He was pretty crazy. He thought he was very arrogant, very. Uh, he had a big ego, and he thought a lot about himself. He thought he was the best one there. You know, he, he thought he could do anything over everybody else. And um, he pretty much, from the beginning, did not like Thomas whatsoever. And really. I don't see why there was no point to just not like a guy for being new I mean obviously I mean if anybody has some kind of initiation they're gonna have you know where they don't like the person at first they initiate them and then they try to get to like them but throughout the whole movie Gally was just not having any kind of you know association with Thomas he was trying to tell him no your ideas are stupid everything that we have done um, you can't just come in here and walk all over it. you can't just start your own little uh, rules and you know fuck up what we got going on so fuck you we don't like you. I don't like you at least so that was very interesting and you know how he never did like come to like Thomas he's even willing to kill Thomas toward the ending but um anyways Albie was this other character in the movie who was basically Thomas's uh, guide he told him about the rules he told him what they do there he told him as long as he does his part, then they should be fine. They should have no problems. He told them who to, who to talk to, who not to really talk to, who not to mess with. And, you know, I liked Albie's character because he was really helpful. And he was kind of like sort of a mentor for Thomas. And then you got people like Chuck. Chuck was this young little kid. He was a little fat kid. And he was pretty cool. He was pretty much like the... Uh, he, he was just one of those kids that you would actually want to talk to because... He would end up telling you things he's not supposed to, but he'd probably tell you without realizing it, or he'd tell you by accident. And he seems like a really cool character to be around. And I really did enjoy his character because he was kind of funny. And um, he made you laugh, and he made you really feel for his character. He made you actually like have emotions for his character. And I really did feel bad for what happened to them at the end of the movie. And uh, Newt is the other guy. He's kind of like Galley's side guy. He's like his side man, second guy in, in command. And I like Newt because he was willing to listen. He was willing to give the, um, Thomas a chance to like prove himself. Give Thomas a chance to do something that no one else has done. And for these people have been living here for three years. Three years in a maze. Just, just imagine living with at least 12 to 14 people in this one maze. Guys, all guys, no women. And um, just living with them for thir three years, trapped in a maze, trying to figure a way out and just not being able to do so and they had these people called runners those people were Miho and um I don't remember the other guy's last name or the other guy's name but he there were two runners but Miho was the main guy they talked to Miho was the guy that they actually sent into the maze 
to try to figure out ways to uh, map out an exit. But Miho uh, went into the maze and he told Thomas that we've I've been running this maze for three years and every day this maze changes. So what Miho did was he created a map, a map of his own to where he could see how the maze works, what changes where, what goes where, and you know this and that and the, and the fifth. And it was just like he saw that he was saying that this maze changes every day and I've been running this maze for three years now you would think that after a year or so I would I would have found an exit but there is no exit I've searched this thing for three years and, the, and like I like he said the maze changes he searched for three years and could not find an exit so he went on to say I don't think they want us to get out of here whoever put us here I don't think they want us to leave I don't think they made an exit. I don't think they want us to get out of this place. I think they want to trap us here and try to. I don't know what for, but um, Thomas, he was a good character as well. I liked his actor, uh, the actor for him. He was a good character, and he wasn't afraid to do stuff, you know. And it was it was hard to say whether he was brave or just stupid. And Newt actually says that in the in the movie, and it's just like, okay, I mean, it's I think it's a little of both. He was he was more brave and more curious rather than brave and stupid. I don't think he was stupid. I think he was just brave and curious to know like why they put him there. He was trying to remember. And whenever someone gets sent up to this place, they forget all memory. Thomas had no clue who he was once he got up top. He didn't know how he got put there. He didn't even remember his own name. So once they did initiation with him, they um uh Galley pushed him on the ground and uh that's when Thomas remembered his name. He was like, my name's Thomas. It's Thomas. And, you know, basically he remembered his name. And that's when, once he remembered that, he was able to then figure out a little bit more of like how he got there. He would have dreams about it. But one way that people would remember how they regain their memory is by harming themselves. If they cause any kind of pain to where, like, say they stabbed themselves with something, like a knife or something or they may have gotten bit or something like that and then there was a cure they could remember what happened to them they, they remember they have some kind of memory of what happened they can recall a little bit by a little bit but then later on in the movie there was this chick who got sent up named Teresa and in her hand was a note and Newt went to pick it up and said this is the last one we're sending ever and they were like confused about like what what exactly does that mean so it was pretty much they were all in like like confused like what, what, what does this mean what are we gonna do and then Galley was still just on Thomas's case the whole movie he was like well none of this happened until Thomas got here all this stuff went to shit once he got here it's all his fault that all this stuff is happening and since they want to kill him how about we give the the people what they want let's give this let's just sacrifice them so before everything really went to shit, before the before Teresa even got, let me back up a sec. Once before Teresa got it, well actually, no, Teresa was there. Teresa was there. Now hold on. Anyways, um, like I was saying, the the glade was supposed to be a safe zone, a safe zone to where no one could get hurt by anything else, such as the Grievers, which are those spiders I mentioned earlier, and I mean that was pretty much the only enemy in there, and. There was one night where the gates to the maze did not close and they were all like getting scared like how come the gates aren't closing we're not going to be safe if the gates are open those the grievers are going to come in here and try to kill us all and sure enough here come the grievers and a lot of people died a lot of people who really didn't deserve to die died but they were the, they were the lesser important characters in the movie and um albie did his best to protect thomas in that scene because he got he pretty much gave his life to protect Thomas and he wanted Thomas he told Thomas you need to find a way out of here you guys cannot stay here you need to I, I, you see I mean he obviously was just pretty much saying you see that I'm dying so you gotta get up you gotta get these people out of here and uh, Chuck the little fat kid he was the, he made this little trinket for his parents but he didn't he said he didn't know who his parents were but he's like he must have them out there somewhere and I felt really bad for him when he said stuff like that and he was like he gave his little trinket to Thomas and he was like, can you give this to my parents for me, please? Because, you know, and then Thomas was like, no, come here. And then he put the thing back into Chuck's hand and he was like, you give it to him. You're going to make it out of here. Trust me. Just believe me. We're going to get out of here. I'm going to get you out of here. And for that moment, I almost wanted to cry because I was just like, 
wow I, I just like his motivation toward Chuck I just like how he's trying to keep hope alive he's trying to show that someone that there is a possibility to do something greater than what you could ever imagine he, he was trying to keep these people motivated to try to get out of here and that's what I really liked about Thomas's character that he was a inspirational person so um but if I had to give this movie my overall opinion I think it was a 9.5 out of 10 it wasn't perfect but it was pretty it was really damn good and I will have to admit this was a very you should go see this movie um and I don't know for the rest of this year if any of these movies will be as good as this one but hopefully Annabelle will be just as good and um maybe something else that comes out between now and then but uh yeah if you guys even read the book I definitely go see it because if you like the book you'll definitely like the movie and uh, anyways thanks for watching this video if you guys enjoyed this video then please uh, subscribe to our channel because we are trying to grow like I've been saying and we need the support as much as we can get and uh, make sure you rate that thumbs up button let's try to get that rate to 30 likes please I would love to get 30 likes on one video um, and also if you have any comments or questions about this movie then please let me know in the comment section below. And on that note, this has been your broadcast.